Hi guys, welcome. Today I wanted to share with you a quick demonstration of a new Alana system I use called Spark. Spark is by Omco. And I'd like to share with you, um, you know, what the software is like, what's my experience like with this software. And uh, I'm just going to um, just make this as big as I can for you. Um, and I think this is an Alana system that I've been really loving. I've swapped a lot of my patients from Invisalign to Spark. I'm finding the software is really, really good to use, quite user-friendly. Um, and it's got all the elements that I need to design, to let the technician know, um, to add features that I want, to modify attachments, whatever I want. But one thing I'm really enjoying about my Spark patients is the plastic is clearer and a little bit thinner than Invisalign. And I think what that's doing is creating a bit more flexibility. And I'm seeing a lot of complex rotations being treated very efficiently and fast, uh, possibly faster than some of my Invisalign patients. At this stage, um, I don't have any data analyzed, but this is my clinical experience that I'm finding um, after doing lots of Spark and having done thousands of Invisalign cases. Um, I'm also finding I'm getting a little bit less posterior open bite. So let's have a look at this case where I've got a, a kid who's starting his malocclusion this way. So he's a teenage boy um, who has got a class two division one malocclusion with overjet. And you can see different views here. That's the anterior view pre-treatment. That is the buckle view from the right side uh, pre-treatment. And that's the buckle view from left side. So obviously I have given initial instructions to the technicians to say, we're going to correct class two sagittally. We're going to correct the deep bite vertically. And we're going to also align and expand the dental arches somewhat because he does seem a bit narrow in his premolar molar region compared to his anterior region. So overall we have a combination of dental arch expansion. Um, we have some vertical correction to do to correct the deep bite. Now this is a growing child. So we've got opportunity of dental alveolar eruption um, for the lower teeth, especially. And then we're gonna do a class two correction with uh, some mechanics, right? We either need a class two corrector, class two elastics, um, or perhaps some distalization with the liners, okay? Or um, an elastic simulation predicting growth. Now, we know every class two elastic has a slight distalizing effect on the upper arch, whether the child is growing or not. So we kind of can mimic that. So let's look at our transverse correction that the technicians have created based on my um, instructions. So you can see that here, we are getting some nice two to three millimeter dental arch expansion. If you look at clear aligner literature, 30% of expansion in upper arch does not happen. So we know that we're within biologic limits here. If we look at vertical correction, you will see that I've probably uh, been leveling this curve of speed. I've asked the technician to um, level this curve of speed for us. I'm just gonna show you this view, right? So we need eruption of the lower posteriors and we need some intrusion or relative intrusion of the lower anteriors. We're kind of creating that. Now notice I don't have too many attachments anteriorly because with aligners, intrusion is relatively predictable. But when it comes to extrusion, you definitely need attachments. And we know the lower seven still erupting. So we're just gonna, this is the first set. So we're just gonna let them erupt um, and deal with this later in a second set. So now let's look at um, from this side, this side, we are adding an attachment and you can see how we're trying to level the curve of speed. Okay, so overall the effect is that that deep bite is being corrected, partly a combination of anterior intrusion as identified by his smile aesthetics and partly a combination of posterior extrusion in the lower arch. Um, I do not recommend that you extrude in the upper arch, especially in a class two case. As you know, if you extrude upper molars, it can rotate the mandible down and back and make your class two worse. Now, how do we correct the sagittal? So we've decided that we're gonna go with class two elastic with a bit of distalization effect built in and a bit of a lower arch mesialization. 
So if we look at the movie, you can see there is on mass distillation, um, mimicking a clastoelastic effect with some lower posterior eruption and some mesialization of that lower arch. So overall, our effect would probably, and, and in my opinion, whatever I do, probably 80% of this simulation will happen if it's designed right with principles in mind, with growth in mind. Um, you know, when we get to towards end of this bed, uh, I'm fairly confident we might be able to get close to this and we might do some final alignment and leveling later. Now, if I don't like an attachment, which here, I do not like how um, uh, low it is. It's very, very occlusal. I could just move it a bit like that, okay? I could just pick up that attachment and move it. If I would like to move that attachment a bit more incisally, I can do that. Each attachment can be mod modified just like any other software. And what I would like is that lower seven attachment to be removed because I think the three seven, it is way too small to actually um, be of any use for now. So I'm going to remove it, but I actually think I would like to place some attachments on his lower fours to help them erupt. So what I would do is actually now um, go into my um, module here to add an attachment and I'd like gingerly beveled. So I'm going to pick my attachment as a beveled one with bevel to the gingival and I'm going to click, click on the tooth and add that attachment. So I'm happy with the position of it and I would add similar here, partly because we are extruding these teeth. And I also think I would like to extrude the six a little bit more. So I double click the tooth. Now I can lift it up. The seven has no attachment, the lower seven, but we can still extrude it, okay? The reason we can still extrude it is because it is actually um, still erupting without an attachment. So if you did nothing on that seven, you know that seven will erupt. The, the, the kid is growing, it's erupting. So simply just adding that to your plan, that eruption, and knowing that this is going to happen, even if you put no attachment, it, it can actually help you. So I'm just gonna lift that up slightly. Now, if you wanted to measure how much you've done, it is possible as well. And I also would like to lift um, the lower right molar. I'd like to extrude it just that little bit more. Okay, I just think it needs a bit more extrusion. Um, and possibly the lower right five as well. As you know, we need space when we level curve of speed. So you see that little inside the proclination happening as you're doing it. So we're just going to extrude that just that little bit more, possibly done too much. Um, and if you don't wanna do it free-handed, you can just enter it in the table. Um, I actually think the four should also be extruded. So I'm gonna show you here how I'm gonna pick this tooth up. You can give root torque. So you've got 3D tools to kind of rotate the tooth, give it torque. Um, and I'm just gonna show you here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna pick this. I think this could extrude slightly or perhaps this one can extrude slightly. Now doing so will help you really correct your curve of speed in the lower arch. Now we can also look at tooth movement charts here. So if I click on this, you'll see in a sec, uh, tooth movement chart will open up and we'll be able to view what different movements are built on the tooth. 